At a coastal site on the southeastern tip of Newfoundland, a brand new rocket is nearly ready for flight. It was built entirely in Canada, fueled by kerosene and ambition, and spearheaded by a startup with its eyes on orbit. Nord Space is on track to conduct the first commercial liquid-fueled rocket launch in Canadian history, a suborbital shot scheduled for mid-August. Rooting for the company behind the scenes is Protospace, an aerospace manufacturing arm of Canadian firm Protocase, boasting high-velocity production and delivery of specialized space-grade components within two to three days compared to industry norms of weeks or months. Together, Nord Space and Protospace represent a growing push to establish a domestic space industry in Canada that supports its own launch infrastructure, source manufacturing, and orbital launch capability. Rahul Goel is CEO and co-founder of Nord Space. Canada has played a long and uh, important role in, in space, uh, but it's kind of taken a, a major step back in the last uh, decade or two, where we've kind of mainly been playing a participatory role instead of a leadership one, and one of the biggest gaps in our value chain has always been launch. Despite a storied history in robotics and space contributions, such as Canada Arm, Dexter, RadarSat, and others, Canada has never launched anything to orbit from its own soil. Nord Space aims to change that. The company's Taiga rocket isn't going to reach orbit when it launches in August, but it's a big step toward the company's ultimate goal. Taiga is a small, liquid-fueled hypersonic launch vehicle capable of carrying just over 110 pounds above the Kármán line. This summer's shakedown cruise will be a low-altitude demonstration of Taiga's capabilities. You know, we get this win under our belts, uh, and then we'll attempt a second flight later this year or early next year to demonstrate its full capability. That capability extends beyond just Nord Space's launch vehicle. Part of Taiga's success will point to a larger accomplishment Nord Space is hoping to achieve, proving that it's possible to launch a Canadian-built rocket carrying Canadian payloads from a Canadian spaceport. Nord Space has set what it regards as a steady, realistic pace for itself as it keeps its eyes on orbit. The company plans to follow this summer's launch with a second Taiga flight in 2026, a full hypersonic space shot mission. After that comes Tundra, an orbital vehicle comparable to Rocket Lab's Electron rocket, which will be capable of launching 1,100 pounds to low Earth orbit and 550 pounds to sun-synchronous orbit. Nord Space hopes to debut Tundra in late 2027. Nord Space's Atlantic Spaceport Complex, ASX, in Newfoundland is located at 46 degrees latitude, allowing the range to potentially support a wide variety of launch inclinations. Goal says the company will launch Tundra as a Pathfinder vehicle within the small payload market for a couple of years while simultaneously developing an even bigger rocket. By the end of the decade, we're, we're doing at least one launch a month. We think that's a lot more reasonable than new companies coming out of the gate who, who say they're going to launch 50 times a year. In the 2030s, Nord Space plans to scale to Titan, a 5-ton to LEO reusable rocket aimed at matching the capabilities of launch vehicles like SpaceX's Falcon 9. We're really treating Canada as a pathfinder market. Our estimation is that we can have about 4 to 7 launches of our launch vehicle just with Canadian payloads, and a lot of them national security focused. They all have to go south of the border or otherwise. Goal says he estimates ASX can support several launches a year just with Canadian payloads. In fact, Canadian payloads, specifically national security payloads, are one of the driving motivations for Canada to support its own orbital launch capabilities. They're the ones who really are sending the strongest demand signals that, hey, look, this will be really important from a national security standpoint. Space is increasingly a warfighting domain. We're not excited about relying on foreign partners, no matter how close they may be, to get our assets to space. We have all these payloads that kind of just sit on shelves. Let's just toss them on your rocket and get them up there. Goal says that Nord Space could be positioned to address an international launch market sometime in the tail end of the early 2030s. Nord Space is developing all of its rockets in-house, including the engines powering them. Taiga's first stage Hadfield engines and second stage Garneau engines are 3D printed, regeneratively cooled, additively manufactured, and tested at Nord Space's own facility two hours east of its headquarters. While Nord Space is building its rockets, Protospace is helping to speed up Canadian innovation and manufacturing to support a budding rocket and aerospace industry. At first, Goal assumed Nord Space would need to import a lot. Then he and his team looked around. We have a very robust uh, industrial base here. When we started Nord Space, we had no idea that we'd identify 10 minutes uh, within our radius um, about five companies that are providing mission-critical components to the engine assemblies for Raptor and Merlin engines. Merlin engines power SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launchers, and Raptors power the company's new Starship rocket. Doug Milburn serves as chairman for Proto Space, 
which specializes in high-velocity mass custom manufacturing, known for delivering certified ITAR and Canadian Goods Program compliant aerospace parts in days instead of weeks. Those who win in innovation are those who get velocity. Milburn warns companies of hampering their own progress by stifling engineering teams' momentum with multiple purchasing routes for an increasing amount of smaller, more specialized parts required for whatever project they take on. You know, if you look at the cost of a part to an aerospace team like people like Raul, your engineers are your cost. It's not the parts. It's your engineers. You know, we'll see an old school aerospace, uh, you know, put a bid package out for development parts. The amount of money for your engineers put in a bid package your purchases to work on it, it, it dwarfs the cost of the individual parts a lot of the time. But the minute you start getting in the way of your development team's velocity, you've just thrown a wrench into things, you've upped your costs, and you've dropped your odds of success. That's what protospace is. Uh, you know, as a result, we play for a bunch of the big guys, and then we have these incredibly exciting startups like Raul, and his company is just really, really cool, doing some really neat stuff. Milburn says Canada's aerospace sector is more extensive than it's given credit for. There's the core stuff, and that, that tends to be done company by company now. My take is, is the bulk of what's done can get done in Canada. But getting a rocket off the ground in Canada isn't just about manufacturing and assembling the parts. Nord Space and companies like Protospace must navigate a regulatory system that's still finding its footing. If they're going to regulate private space the way that they regulate general aviation in Canada, then the thing's just it's, it's dead in the ground. The we can't do this in Canada is a natural reaction in a country that is naturally risk averse. The nation is also lacking some of the most critical regulatory components to allow companies like Nord Space to move forward with progress. Canada doesn't yet have a fully realized launch licensing system, so Nord Space chose to push the envelope deliberately, applying for a commercial orbital class license even for its suborbital demo. Goal says his company wanted to force its Taiga launch to be regulated under commercial space launch requirements. While this requires significantly more boxes to check for the upcoming flight than would otherwise be necessary for a suborbital launch, Nord Space wanted to make sure all parties involved would have a confident understanding of the regulatory procedures. By the time in 2027 we're ready for orbital, we're not stuck on the pad because the regulators aren't able to actually uh, regulate this thing, uh, even if they wanted to. There's a lot of this front-loading, a huge reason as well why we can't just build rockets. We have to bring the whole system together with us, policy, uh, regulations, all the different agencies that it affects. He agrees with Milburn's risk-averse observation of Canada, but hopes Nord Space can help change that. In Canada, very much unlike the United States, is, is a much more risk-averse nation, and, you know, that is what it is. Maybe we can uh, tweak that over time, especially with the success of launch. I think that will send a strong signal. He hopes that signal resonates throughout the country, but doesn't expect the gospel to spread all at once. In fact, in Canada, you mentioned to anybody that you're building rocket engines and you want to test them on their farm or on an industrial plot, they're just going to have an allergic reaction to it right away. And we got kicked out of every location you can imagine. So ultimately, I can bite the bullet, buy an old mine, and then build our engine test facility over there. But the point is that we want to open that up for others as well. Nord Space isn't building for a space industry of one. Its 150-acre ASX coastal site will include two launch pads, one specifically designated for third-party use. We're building two pads very specifically so that we can offer the second one to somebody else, ideally a domestic launch partner, but also foreign. It's a very strategically located site. The United States is under a lot of pressure for launch site capacity. The newly signed, or about to be signed, technology safeguards agreement with the United States means that uh, rockets and systems can flow north of the border for the first time. And we strategically located it as well to be about 100 kilometers east of the French territory of St. Pierre and Miquelon. So we're trying to be as accommodating as possible to even European launch providers. It's very challenging, I think, for somebody in Canada to take the path that we're taking where, you know, you have an entrepreneur who's a crazy kind of space geek his whole life, um, spent spent the last decade acquiring his own, you know, small fortune, but getting to that point where now investing it all back in Canada, it's really the only way, but I consider that a tremendous responsibility um, to create infrastructure that other Canadians can leverage. You know, it's also a good sales opportunity for us. 
Unlike in the U.S., Canadian companies aren't bound by ITAR, the International Traffic and Arms Regulations, making Nordspace's business model and technology attractive to global markets. Because we're ITAR-free in a lot of ways, copy and paste this model to other nations um, that are looking to develop their own sovereign launch capabilities and sovereign space programs, but don't have the technical capability, manufacturing and industrial base and all of that, and use that model um, and, and help other nations actually develop their own space programs, nations like Kenya, Philippines, you know, Peru, and others that we've been in conversations with. I think Canada is a very unique country, and when we're we're really serious about making this happen, not just because of the economic and national security benefits, but um, I really believe, born and raised Canadian, that we need a win in this country as something that people can point to for decades and say, look, they did this against all odds. And I don't want this to seem like, you know, this like story where you have a bunch of people that, um, that, that did something that seemed impossible. This is possible. So I'm really trying to make sure that this is a story that, that it, it doesn't just have the economic and security and, and environmental impact and all that we hope it does but it really becomes a, a symbol for Canada for what we can do in all sorts of domains, um, not just space. And, uh, and I, I think space, and it, it has this ability to inspire unlike anything else. And I think that North Space will really tap into that for the first time for Canada. And um, I, I can't wait to see what that results in over the course of my lifetime.